Hi everyone, welcome to this first video of the project Mindstreaming Sexual and Gender Related Violence Sensibilities into University Courses through PhotoVoice Experience. In this video, I'm going to talk about PhotoVoice, uh, its definition, theoretical framework, and also steps for it, it, its implementation. This video has been developed by me, Aloe Cubero, uh, from the University of Roberto Virgili, and my colleague, Rocío Garrido, a professor from the University of Seville. So the first thing that we have to do is to define PhotoVoice. What is PhotoVoice? Well, PhotoVoice is a par participatory action research technique that uses photography and narratives uh, and allow us to know, to learn about the values, the thoughts, the, th the feelings and experiences of a community or social group. Between its key features, uh, we can find that photo voice promotes the development of critical consciousness. The, well, it um, uh, promotes a participatory identification of strengths and weaknesses, and also it aims to influence in, pu in public policies. So, well, what does it come from? What is the theoretical background of photo voice? Well, the first theory is critical is the critical pedagogy and the thought of Paulo uh, Freire. Freire used uh, visual images as a means for communities to think critically about the everyday social and political issues that were crossing their lives. Uh, in photo, vo photo voice allows to, to, to develop an individual and a, a collective reflection about the different social problems that cross in our lives. And it allows to connect that problems with social structures. The second theory is feminist theory. As we know, a, a feminist theory has allowed us to uh, analyze uh, well, gender oppression, and it also put value uh, and honor the voices of women and other historically uh, subaltern uh, groups. In photo voice, uh, well, photo voice encourage women and the social group, uh, groups to tell their own stories through photographs. And the third one is uh, documentary photography, uh, which has been considered the social consciousness within the field of visual imaginary. Well, its fair application uh, was carried out by Juan and Barris with rural, rural women in a small community of the Yunnan Providence uh, in China to identify uh, the health needs that th these women had uh, uh, that do these women have. <laughs> well, uh, I, need to th I need to say three very important things about uh, photo voice. First of all, participants are considered active agents in the knowledge building process. Secondly, they collectively identify the community problems and possible solutions from uh, their own resources. That's important. And uh, lastly, it's always oriented towards social action. It's always oriented to influence in public policies. So now we are going to see the step-by-step -step of photo voice. Well, first of all, we have a preparation phase uh, in which we have to engage participants, introduce a photo voice method methodology, of course, and select the topic. After that, we go to the phase one, uh, in which participants have to think critically about the topic selected and also developing their photonarratives. Uh, it's uh, in a period of one or two weeks. After that, we go to the phase two, uh, in which participants uh, share their individual photonarratives and debate about the different topics uh, of the photonarratives, identifying common issues and differences also. Uh, and finally, in this part, it's important to, uh, to make a participative analysis, to, the, to codify the themes that have arisen during uh, the debates. After that, we go to the phase three, uh, which consists uh, of planning and implementing a strategy to share the results with the rest of the audience, with the rest uh, of the community. And it's oriented to make visible the realities uh, of the community and also advocating for their rights. Lastly, uh, we go to the last phase, uh, which is uh, the evaluation of uh, photo results. And it's not only uh, about evaluating 
in, uh, the impact on participants. It's also about evaluating the impact in the community and also in the local policies. But for the voice, it's a very adaptive uh, methodolo methodology. That is why it uh, has been used also in educa educational settings. As a pedagogical tool, uh, for the voice produ produce a transformation of the traditional roles uh, in the educational system, considering a students active agents in the process uh, of knowledge construction. In this line, uh, we in this project, uh, we proposed a uh, a guide to implement for the voice uh, in classroom settings uh, to address sexual and gender related violence. Uh, so now I'm going to tell you about the different sessions and uh, steps uh, that we consider that's important to have in implementing for the voice. So the first session is about introducing photo voice and it consists in welcoming the group, what is photo voice, what are we gonna do, uh, and also elaboration of ethical agreements and also collectively building our topic. In our project, we are working uh, to address sexual and gender related violence. So an example of a topic uh, for, for, for this project could be, for example, sexual violence in young women. And here, yeah, well, that, uh, after that, uh, we go to the autonomous work of the students uh, in which they have to critically think about that topic and develop the photo narratives. Here we can see some examples of one of the groups we've been working with. Ah, and we recommend uh, in, this, uh, in this period of one and two weeks uh, sharing uh, the photo narratives in virtual spaces. After that, we go to the session two, uh, which consists of exchanging uh, experiences. So in this session, uh, students have to debate and to find uh, um, points in common or difference about the different themes uh, that have arisen during the, uh, during the debate. After that, we go to the session three, uh, which consists in interpreting and giving meaning. So uh, students have to analyze deeply uh, the different themes, topics, etc., uh, that uh, they uh, brought up during the, uh, during the debates. So here we have to uh, s label, uh, make groups, uh, and finally to go to build uh, categorical systems. For example, typologies of, of violence, spaces in which violence uh, is executed, etc. After that, uh, we uh, consider important to give students a uh, space uh, to keep uh, deepening uh, the, um, the, cate the, the categorical system and their analysis. So we propose an autonomous session uh, for systematization of analysis results and presentation uh, and preparation of the presentation. So here we can see an example uh, of the, the third session in which students put different labels uh, on, the, on the different photographs. So after that, we go to the session four, the last session, uh, which consists in evaluate the process and also uh, in designing next steps uh, for the dissemination and visibility of the reflections built during the process. So to go beyond uh, the classroom walls. So here I, I'll leave you some uh, ideas uh, for for political incidents uh, beyond the, the classroom. For example, uh, physical exhibitions, uh, an Instagram ac account could be a good idea too. Idea too. Uh, virtual exhibitions, videos to, to make different uh, dissemination activities. Well, but it's open to creativity, this part. So thank you so much for your attention. I hope I've been clear and, and you increased a little bit your, uh, your knowledge about photo voice and how to implement it in, in classroom settings. So keep watching our, our videos and bye-bye.